Hello, it's Mike Wall here again at Britannia Motorcycles, We're continuing with our BSA B25 250 trials uh, build up. This is where we left off last time. Uh, we just finished the swinging arm, which I've now put in. The rock shocks are on order, so for the moment I've just put these two pieces in to hold everything in place. Frame, as we said, is, is done. In fact, since you last watched, I put a couple of little pieces in here which are going to be the mountings for the uh, skid plate underneath. Um, this is one of those instances where you don't want to reinvent the wheel. When I cut the original footrest mountings off, the holes that were left were 3 8 inch. So I just took two 3 8 bolts, turned the top so that it was round and looked nice, and then they were drilled and tapped and just bronzed in so we can, uh, we can fit the bash plate to that. Nothing else to do to the frame for now, uh, so what we're going to move on to is the forks. Now if you're doing a B40 or a B44 or one of the TR25s with the other frame that we showed, it would have come with these forks here. Not of course in this uh, very pretty yellow colour, but in black. Now these are all steel. Steel yokes, steel legs, everything. So consequently they're a lot heavier. They're also a lot simpler fork. The damping in these is very simple indeed and the later forks are much nicer. So we are going to use the much later forks, the what are known as the four stud alloy forks. Um, they would have come standard on this frame which is very nice because it means the headstock is correct for the the taper roller bearings. If you're going to uh, use the earlier ones there's probably a couple of uh, special tools you might need. You certainly need this, I'll show you a close-up photograph uh, in a moment. This is to uh, take the oil seal holders which are these nice chrome things to screw them out. It goes down inside and there are two little spaces down there that these teeth fit into. You can screw these off and then take the oil seals out. Also with these forks, because they're not chromed, really you need the top to be covered over. Um, on the actual competition bikes, they had a shroud like this. This is actually the one that had headlamps, so it just wouldn't have this ear on it. But they would have a shroud that goes on there to, uh, to cover that. And because when you've got the shroud on and you've got the fork gaiters on, you've got nothing to get hold of to push the forks up into the top yoke. There is another special tool, which is this one here. You may have noticed that uh, my special tools are all homemade. I should say custom made, but they're homemade, which is the way we used to do things. Basically all this is is an old fork top, which is being turned down so that it will fit inside. A piece of threaded rod, a nut on it, and this you would push down inside till you can screw it into the fork and then you can pull the fork right up. If it's really stiff you can use this nut to put some uh, mechanical strength into it. You pull it up until it's in place and you tighten up your pinch bolts and there you are. So if you've got an old fork top just turn it down and you can make one of those quite easily. Right let me move the camera so we can see parts better and I'll show you the aluminium four stud forks. I don't have a an assembled pair of forks to show you because as it happened these were already partly stripped when I pulled them out of stock. So I'm going to show you all the bits that make up the forks and then as I build them up you'll see basically in reverse the way they come apart and I'll tell you anything you need to know if you're uh, stripping a pair. We'll start right at the top. As I say the nice thing about the later forks are that both yokes are aluminium and also they came with taper roller bearing. So there's a bottom yoke. The stem is actually bolted into this but um, I've only ever once tried to take these out and I'll tell you I couldn't get it out. So they take a lot more work than it's worth having to take one out. In the couple of instances where I've used these forks in in other bikes because they will go into the B40 frame it's just been easier to make up a couple of collars to fit rather than to try and take this out and rework the yokes to to fit them. So there's a bottom yoke, top yoke which has uh, handlebar clamps, 
There is a top taper roller bearing, the cover, and then this which goes on there and is pinched up in the top yoke. Chromed tubes, as you can see the ones on this are really bad so we'll be putting brand new ones in. And also in this one I could not get the bottom piece out. This is uh, the bottom slider basically which screws into there and on this one it just would not come out. You can see I heated it, I tried everything but Basically, as I wasn't going to use these, um, I wasn't that worried. So what I've had to do is buy one new one of those. Inside, there is a damper rod. And on that, there are the valves, which is a two-piece thing. You can see the holes. It's a shuttle valve type thing. This is the end cap. And this is the spring to stop your bottoming out completely. The damper rod has a slot in and it also has two small holes. I'll put some photographs up to show you these uh, in more detail, particularly this one because this one shows you really graphically what happens if you've got water left in the forks. The bottoms are very badly corroded so also we'll be renewing that damper rod. Nice uh, aluminium fork legs so obviously we're going to be a lot lighter than the other ones the famous four studs and as I mentioned before the two outer studs are actually closer together which is why the wheel spindle has to have the little relief in it for them this side has got uh, various lugs on for things a la BSA and Triumph with the TY250 forks we're going to use we're very fortunate in that when the, the wheel is in the uh, torque bolt in the brake plate lines up beautifully with that so we can uh, just fit it straight in and then of course there are the bottoms to go on there so that's the forks what we're going to do is completely rebuild them in order to do that there are several pieces you need starting at the top you're going to need a pair of the uh, dust caps well I should have taken these out of the bag that goes onto there and just keep the dirt out or not as the case may be new pair of fork seals new o-rings to go on the uh, the shuttle valve these little sealing washers actually go at the bottom to stop them leaking and because they're so cheap just a couple of the uh, the plain washers that go at the top where the actual fork, fork top nut goes in just keeps things nice and clean and and easy to to do up so what we're going to do now is uh, rebuild these forks and you'll see all the bits going together here and there I'll put little stills in so, to so that I don't have to be too close up first part of the rebuild for trials at least we're going to modify the damper rod here. Now as you can see it's got it's already got two damping holes and it also has the slot at the bottom. So what we're going to do here, these holes are one and a half inches apart, is another inch and a half down we're going to put a third hole. These are sixteenth inch so we're going to put a sixteenth inch hole in there and that is going to uh, really soften the damping which is very nice. It's going to make the forks feel much plusher which in a trials bike is something that you want. Now, once more I'm going to use one of these amazing little centre drills off the lathe because it's a curved surface. give it a good blowout. Make sure there's no uh, turnings inside there and then we'll uh, put this together. So first off we'll build up the uh, damper tube. Get our new o-ring and put it on the valve. You'll find when you take the old o-ring out this is probably full of crud so you're gonna have to scrape it out and then probably put on a wire brush or something. 
You'll also notice when you get in here um, where the, the tool in the lathe when they made this actually chattered, certainly on this one, so maybe it was an apprentice that made this one. So we put the oil ring on, the oil ring on, goes like that. Here's our damper rod. First thing that goes on is this thin one, then this one with the recessed side down and that screws on. Very important you remember that when you're taking this apart, it does screw on. So don't stick it in the vise and start banging and thumping and carrying on. That goes on and that goes on with this collar pointing upwards. Just take a second in the vise to tighten this up. Okay, there we have that. Now the next piece is this. Spring goes on. Then that goes on and that's our inside piece, the damping. Nice new tube here. And that will screw in there. Now this little sealing washer here which is to seal the bottom of the damper rod actually goes inside the fork it's supposed to be on there like that it doesn't go on the outside under the head of the allen bolt that goes into the bottom of here so we've got that done I'll tighten that up and then we'll deal with the actual fork leg we're going to put a new oil seal in and I've got another fork leg here I'll actually show you about taking the oil seal out so Let's move over now to the vise. So this fork leg has actually got its oil seal still in it. Some of these oil seals are sort of rubber coated. Some of them you'll find they have a metal outer. They're all metal inside, but the, the metal outer ones are sometimes really difficult to get out. You need a little bit of alloy or something just to, uh, to protect the fork leg. And then you uh, hopefully just lever it out. Now then, particularly as I say with the metal ones they are sometimes very difficult to get out and then what you need to do is take a little chisel or a little punch and just fold in the actual seal itself. Careful you don't damage the fork leg. But what you'll find is that once you've collapsed it a little, what tends to happen is out they come. You see that one? is the metal type. So all you do is work on it, work your way around. Sometimes you've got to go around a little bit further, but you'll find that once you collapse that edge, it really loses its grip and it will come out. So we'll clean the inside of this up and then we'll put a new, uh, a new oil seal in. So there's the fork, all nicely cleaned out inside. Here's our new oil seal. Now, I'm sure all of you know this, but the oil seal has a little spring on the lip. And the idea is that the pressure inside gets behind the lip and forces it onto the shaft. That's what makes the seal. So you always put the spring part to the side that you wanted to keep the oil in. If you put it the other way around, of course, the pressure would tend to force the lip away from the shaft, so it would leak. So seeing as the fork oil is gonna be inside there, we want the spring pointing down that way. 
So we we'll just uh, pop that in there. I've got a feeling I went too high there. Let's just check that and see if you can see what we're doing. That's better. All right, so the oil seal goes in. Then you need a drift of some kind to put on top of it. looks to be quite nice. The drift by the way is big enough to go around this little lip it has here. So. There we go. So there's our nice new oil seal in there. So the next thing is to put the fork leg in. Now one thing we've got here is, you remember I mentioned the uh, the little sealing washer that's got to go on the end. So what we're going to actually do is put the spring in the tube and put the top on to hold everything down. So let me get the fork and we will move to the next stage. All right, so here we are with our damp rod in. As I say, what we're going to do is put a spring in then screw on the top nut just like that and then what that's going to do for us is stop that from just dissipating up there when we try to feed everything into the fork leg. Now then, we need our engineer's glue, i.e. pot of grease. Some grease on there. And that will hold our ceiling washer on. Then we will run a drop of oil around here, lubricate the lip. Again, I'm probably being insulting by showing some of you this, but for anybody who is just starting out, you want to have that lip lubricated when you put it together. Then we feed that into there like this. Now we go to the bottom and then you put your Allen bolt in. Now of course you know how well organized I am. I had everything but the Allen bolts for the bottom. So what I've done is just made up a couple of little screws turning the head off some 5 16th fine um, bolts here. So we're going to put that, hopefully, into the bottom of there.
that didn't work and it's gone under the bottom of the bench of course so you spotted my deliberate mistake there of course I haven't got the damper rod quite into the bottom so you just stick a little rod in to, uh, to get it centred and now the screw has gone in like me you were probably wondering why I was screwing and screwing and screwing with about a half inch bolt and it still wasn't there so I'll mention something else here um, to assist in you when you're taking them out the actual damper rod of course can turn in here so once you've got that bolt the allen bolt in to a certain tightness it'll just start to turn now of course there is a special tool for that which is this thing here which again I'll uh, put some photographs on at the end of it again this is a homemade one basically all it is is an incredibly long screwdriver because on the top of the damper rod there's a slot and the screwdriver fits in that you feed this in all the way down until you can get it into that notch then you can hold the damper rod while you tighten it up now if you haven't got one of these or if you don't think it's worthwhile making one because you're only ever going to work on one set of forks if you put the spring in and this works for both tightening it up and for slackening it off put the spring in and then put it up against the wall like this and really put some pressure on you'll find you can tighten it up and even with really tight allen bolts if you put your allen key on so you can give it a, a, a real jar or if you've got uh, you know uh, a torque wrench that will go on with with that they'll come out but certainly holding them up against the spring will give you enough tension so there's one fork together boing 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 I'll build the other one and then we'll put the yokes in the frame and put the forks in so here we go fork installation uh, a couple of things say I'm getting old I put the dust seals on so you can see them and the other thing is if you're worried about the little bolt I put in there that was just temporary so I could build this this is a dry build when I do it properly I'll put the right allen bolts in because they will have arrived by then so bottom yoke goes in tape preparing little dust cover And then the top goes on. As I mentioned before, the top of these stanchions are tapered. top nut will pull them right up in so you do the top nut first before you do the pinch bolts in fact you get everything sorted before you do the pinch bolts in the bottom yoke And this is as I say where if you're using the other forks you would use the the tool you'd put it right down there and screw it into the top of the fork tube and then you could pull it up into there I'm 
more haste, less speed. There we go. Now I will zoom out and you can see the forks in situ, as the phrase is. Pardon me. There you go. Next thing will be to put the mud guards in and we'll do some little things. So for the next one, it'll be the front mud guard, rear mud guard, the seat panel, and who knows, we might even get onto uh, working on the oil tank as well. All right, that's it for today, people. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for those who subscribed and we will talk to you again soon. Here's the fork damping tube or rod, depending on how you'd like to uh, term it. And you can see this one is rusty. Working from left to right, you'll see the little notch in the end that the fork tool goes into. Then the threads onto which the uh, shuttle valve fits and the end nut. Then moving along, you'll see the two small damping holes and then the slot. You'll uh, get a chance to see how badly this end of the damping tube is corroded in the next shot. Pretty nasty isn't it? And really unless this was a part that was unobtainable, not fit for anything else but junk, which it was junked. Here's the first fork special tool and my dainty feet. This as I mentioned is basically an extremely long screwdriver with a T-handle at the left hand end and at the right hand end basically a screwdriver slot that fits into the dump the damper tube to hold it while you fasten the allen bolt in the other end. Here's the screwdriver end for want of a better word. As you'll notice it sort of sticks out a little bit that's because it has to go down inside the top nut on the end of the damper tube. And here's the slot in the end of the damper tube that that screwdriver sort of end fits into. It's a pretty simple tool, but it really is quite handy if you're going to take a few of these forks apart and reassemble them. This is the tool for use in the earlier forks. As you can see, it's basically another T-handle, a long piece of threaded rod with a nut on it, and then a large washer so you can uh, press it up against the top yoke. The threaded piece at the end is basically just a fork top nut that I've turned the flats off and made it small enough to go through the, the top yoke and down to the fork stanchion or fork tube as it's called here in the States. The uh, actual size of this varies depending on the forks so this one will fit Triumph forks as well, the earlier ones, but it won't fit the actual later four stud forks that we are working on. Here's a closer look at the turn down fork top nut. It's a really simple tool, tool, but believe me, it can be a real help if the forks are sticky in the bottom yoke and don't want to be pulled up to the top. Here's the last tool. It's the fork seal holder unscrewer. It's very simple, just a piece of tube with a couple of notches in the bottom, which you'll see in close up in a moment. The thing to bear in mind, of course, is the handle at the top can't go right through the tube because this slow tube is going to slide down the stanchion so it's it's two short lengths of rod bronzed into either side and here you can see the two notches that fit down into the collar at the bottom of the uh, fork seal holder i made this one uh, on the mill but you could just as easily cut them out and file them so hacksaw on a file job again an easy tool and it saves you having to try and grip the actual fork seal holder from the outside because they are chrome and you can make a mess of them. Anyway, there you go.